Hi everybody, it's Lori Watzel here with the next installment of Tech Tip Tuesdays. Today I'm going to share with you a tool that could potentially be considered a learning management system. And for those of you at the elementary level and potentially the middle school level that are really starting to outgrow your Weebly because it doesn't provide enough interactivity for you, uh, Schoology could be a really nice complement to what you are currently doing or could potentially take over what you're currently doing. This is Schoology.com and it is free. So I'm going to go ahead and log in and creating the account is free. Now the first thing I want you to see here is that you can create uh, multiple courses. If you are familiar at all with Edmodo, you're going to notice that the look and feel is pretty similar. I'm not going to get into all the details of what this can do. If you're familiar with Edmodo, you're going to know this is really just meant for exposure. I'm going to go over here to the top where it says courses and you'll notice that I created two separate courses. I'm going to go into this second hour language arts class. So if you are a secondary teacher that teaches multiple hours, you can set your classes up that way. Or if you are an elementary teacher and you want to set it up by subjects, you could do it that way. In the bottom left corner here, just like Edmodo, you'll notice this access code. So kids actually enroll themselves in your class with the access code. And Schoology is a free app. You as the teacher can manage and unenroll them as necessary. You'll notice over here on the right hand side, you'll see this calendar view. You can add events to the calendar and these could be just school events like a school dance coming up or the end of the year picnic or whatever it may be. And if you add those, it gets added to your classroom calendar. And what you see here is assignments. These are assignments that have added to the calendar and the students see them when they log into the system. And I'll show you what the student side looks like as well. I'm going to flip over to my iPad so you can see, see the student end of things. Here's my student iPad. And now that I'm in full screen, I have logged in as a fictitious student. And the first thing when they, see log, when they log in is this upcoming list of events. And this list of events, you'll notice, is different than the list I originally showed you. And the reason for that is because this student is actually enrolled in two courses. So these events right here are the events for the language arts class. And when I go over here to the math course, you see a list of upcoming events. And for the student, it actually combines all of those events into one. Going back to the language arts class, again, I'm giving you a really brief overview of what this can do. You have this area here where you can add materials. And I have, for instance, added a folder, and this is an entire unit. So you could create your units within folders, and then all of your content for that unit goes inside of it. And for this one, for instance, I actually have couple of videos in here that the students can access from their iPad as well as an assignment that I have put in there. In terms of adding materials, you have lots of different choices. When I go to add materials, I do want you to notice that if you haven't done a lot of online assessments, this test and quiz tool is a great way for you to do online assessments with your students and it gives you a great item analysis when you're done, very similar to Edmodo. You also have the option to add discussions, very much like a blog in a Weebly, for instance. You can grade the discussions if you wish. And this I thought was a really neat, neat feature within the advanced area. You can require that students have to post their first comment before they see anybody else's replies. And this helps to make their comments probably more unique in the long run. You'll also notice, notice this area over here. It's very easy to copy these assignments or discussion threads or those kinds of things to other courses. So it can very quickly and easily be duplicated. I'm going to share with you what I think is one of the most powerful pieces of this and this is the assignment area. When I add an assignment, I name it, 
I give it a description if necessary. I can enable a drop box, and the drop box is the really neat piece of this. You can assign points. You can give a due date, and if you give a due date, you're going to see it show up over here in the calendar on the right-hand side. You set a category, so I just set up two categories of assessments and homework. And uh, within the advanced area, you can enable comments, whether or not this is published. You can copy it to other courses and so on and so forth. I'm going to take you to the iSearch paper where I have within the encyclopedia portion this encyclopedia documentation. And this is an assignment. And what the students do is go to their iPad, and I'll show you this side of it. They go to their iPad actually have the ability to download the assignment, complete it right on the iPad, and submit it back to you. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what that looks like with a different assignment. Here I am back on the iPad. Let me get into full screen. On the iPad, I'm going to, as a student, go to my courses and choose my language arts second hour. As a student, I've already completed my encyclopedia assignment, so now it's time for me to work on the ebooks assignment. And this piece right here is the homework assignment, and you can tell by the icon. So I tap on it. It's a PDF document. I am going to tap on the assignment, and it opens it. And in order to complete the assignment, I'm going to open it and type on PDF free. So if I was a student doing my research, I would go in and either write this information in or type it in, and of course I would do a better job with it. But let's say I'm done with this assignment now. As a student, I tap on send, I tap on high def, and instead of emailing it, I tap on another app. I export it with the ad, and you'll notice as I scroll through here, Schoology is one of my options. So I say open it in Schoology, and the student has the choice to select which course they're submitting the assignment to. They are submitting it to Language Arts Second Hour, and this is the ebook assignment, so they're going to tap on ebook. And what it's doing right now is taking this assignment and dropping it into the teacher's inbox. I'm going to go back to the teacher side of things just to show you what this looks like. If I go back to my second hour language arts class, you'll notice this little reminder right here, and it tells me I have an ungraded Dropbox item. When I go into the Dropbox item, literally what happened is it tells me that Isabella did this assignment, she completed it on time, and it needs grading. So I click on it. It does take some time to render. So in order to be able to show you what this looks like once it's rendered, I'm going to go to the encyclopedia assignment that I submitted yesterday and click on it. And this is what you see when the kids submit an assignment to you. Once it renders, it shows up right within the window. And not only can you see everything that they did, you now have the ability over on the right-hand side to provide them comments. And as soon as you provide comments and you hit post, the students will see the comments that you made and what grade they got. Now, it won't put the grade into PowerSchool. You're still going to have to do that yourself. But the ability for them to complete the assignment digitally, submit it to you digitally, and for you to provide feedback digitally is all built into the system. Let's take this one step farther. Type on PDF is great, but we obviously have other tools that our students are using. And if I get out of this and I go back into the iSearch paper assignment, let's pretend that I am a student who has finished my final iSearch paper and I'm ready to submit it. The place to submit it is right here. It says create your final iSearch paper in the SkyDrive and submit it here. I am once again flipping over to my iPad and Going into SkyDrive, let's pretend that this is the student's final iSearch paper that they created on with a web app using SkyDrive or they created using CloudOn. If I go to the bottom right-hand corner here, right now I am in the SkyDrive app. I'm going to say open in another app. 
I have the option to open in Schoology. Again, I have the option to choose which class, Language Arts Second Hour. And this is the final iSearch paper. And it is uploading the final iSearch paper that was created using the SkyDrive and uploading it directly to the teacher's Schoology Dropbox account. Just like you saw the other assignment pop up, I now have two ungraded Dropbox items. It will take a, about 10 minutes to render or convert so that you'll be able to see it directly within your Dropbox, but you'll then be able to provide feedback exactly the same way that you did with the PDF document. So there are a lot of options here. Let me throw one more out there. I'm going to go into courses and I'm going to go into math and I'm not going to show the details. I'm just going to plant the seed here. Let's say you had your students create videos, perhaps a screencast, and you wanted to be able to view each of the students' screencasts before you maybe posted them to your classroom website, the exemplary examples anyway. I'm going to go over to the student iPad here. On the same page, I'm in the math class and you'll notice right here it says math problem screencast and that is the assignment. As a student I tap on that. If I as a student was ready to submit a video I would click on the plus sign and assuming this photo, photo or video was living in my camera roll I would click on submit photo or video. I'll apologize in advance because I am using this reflector software to see my iPad on my computer. You're not going to see exactly what it is I'm seeing on the iPad. I'm clicking on add photo or video and I'm choosing from the library and this is where the display may get a little crazy. I'm going to tap on the video I want to use, this one right here, and then it looks different for you but I am tapping on the word use and it is taking a moment but it is compressing the video. Now that it is compressed, now you're seeing what I see and I go ahead as a student and tap on submit. It is now taking the video that I have created as a student and submitted it to my teacher's Dropbox. If you have students doing screencasts, you do have to be careful about which screencasting tool you are using. As you know, tools like ScreenChomp or Show Me, they don't export the video out to the camera roll, the video is given as a URL. So you could have the students submit that URL to you instead. Here's the really powerful piece of this. If I go back into my Schoology and you can see that I have an ungraded Dropbox item, I'm going to go into the Math Problem screencast and I have put one in here ahead of time. That one that I just submitted is Try revision number three, and it does take some time to render, just like an assignment takes a little bit of time to render. I'm going to go to revision two here, and revision two, you'll notice, is a screencast that I created using Doceri as an example. So not only does it submit the video to you through your Dropbox, if you allow it enough time to render, you can actually view it right within your browser window and play it. If it's one that's worth downloading, you are able to download it and you can provide the comments back to the student. Pretty powerful stuff. So the students can create screencasts using Doceri at this point, though I'm sure that list of available apps will grow. And the students can take videos that they have created using iMovie or Splice and upload them from their camera roll directly into your Dropbox and you are able to provide them feedback. You noticed as I was going through that process that I got a notification that I received something in my Dropbox. As a teacher, you're probably not going to want to receive all those notifications and all those notifications can be managed and you can turn those off because if you're getting 35 assignments sent into you at one time, you certainly don't want all those messages crowding your email inbox. But I hope you see some of the power behind this and how it will provide that level of interactivity that perhaps your current web presence doesn't. I would encourage you to take some time to take a look at this. I'm no pro at it, but I've definitely played around enough to hopefully be able to answer your questions. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. 
Have a great day.